Hey guys, this is Derek from Tap and Turn Gaming, and thanks for tuning in for part two of my Sharoom the Hegemon EDH deck tech. So why don't we just get right into it? I'm going to go over why I made choices on some single cards, tell you what some of these single cards bring to the deck, and then I'm also going to be going over some combos and some synergies. <clears throat> so let's start off with the land. Uh, for the uh, the basics and the, the tri-colors and the dual colors, I'm actually really not going to say much about them because, frankly, you probably all know what they do. So I'll just go over some of my tech lands here. <clears throat> we have Halimar Depths for the, uh, you know, setting up my draws, Bazooka Bog for exiling graveyards, Ameria because I personally like this land and like the free res it brings, uh, Seed of Cyanoid, Vault of Whispers, Darksteel Citadel, and Ancient Den. <clears throat> They're my four colors of uh, artifact lands, so I ran all four just to make sure I could have all the possible artifact lands in the deck. Then I have Vesuva to be able to copy any one of my lands on the board. Reliquary Tower to have that infinite hand size. Academy Ruins to be able to get an artifact from my graveyard back. And Terramorphic Expanse and Evolving Wilds just to be able to fetch out some planes a little faster. Uh, as planes are the only basics that I do run. Now I'm going to go over the Planeswalkers that I run. Uh, just a small little group of three here. I run Tezzeret, Agent of Bolas for the uh, filtering that he provides to get artifacts out. And for his ability to target player loses X life and I gain X life for X is twice the number of artifacts I control. That's an amazing ability for a predominantly artifact deck. <clears throat> I don't really use his, his second ability too much. I don't really find it super relevant for me. Uh, it's good, but it's just not for me. Vents of the Sojourner. Um, I love this guy. All of his abilities are super, super relevant pretty much all the time. Being able to blink any one of my permanents, almost every permanent I have does something. Being able to make all my creatures unblockable. Once I get to 40 power, use this. Game over. And then uh, the ability, the, his ability here to give me an emblem where whenever I cast a spell, I can exile a permanent. And these emblems can stack and you can have multiple of them out at once. Really, really good. Tezzeret the Seeker. Untap two permanent. Uh, untap two artifacts. You know, I can use this for my artifact lands. Or just a lot of my guys that have tapping abilities or, or my, any of my artifacts that have tapping abilities. It's pretty good. And then we also have um, his ability here, being able to minus X to two different artifacts whose cost equals X. I can search for a four, five, or six cost card. Or I can even, if I want to, I can just pay zero, uh, minus zero and search one of my artifact lands. He's, he's really nice. Now I'm going to go on to my enchantments. Pretty basic here. I run Grave Pact, Dictate of Erebos, and Martyr's Bond. All of the, uh, the Grave Pact and its cousins, I guess you could say. And then I run uh, Debtor's Nail because I can't play a black-white deck without having Debtor's Nail. There's just something something wrong inside my head. And if I'm playing black-white, I have to play Debtor's Nail. But, uh, yeah, that's my, my enchantments. You know, just a small package uh, because I will be losing a lot of creatures, especially with my infinite mana combo. This does the same thing. This is nice for me because whenever one of my creatures dies, my opponents have to lose a creature. Whenever one of my artifacts dies, my opponents have to lose an artifact. And enchantment, so on and so forth, but it's just it's it's good. And even though it costs six and it's it's up there in cost, I'll still play it. Now I'm gonna go with my instants and sorceries. Um, Demonic Tutor, obviously. Transmute artifact is nice, two mana, um, sacrifice an artifact, and search my library for any artifact and put it right in the battlefield. Um, and all I have to do in response to the sacrificing of the artifact is uh, pay the difference in the mana cost. So I, I pay this for two, I sacrifice, say, a Solemn Simulacrum for four mana, and I get a Microsynth Lattice for six. I have to pay an additional two mana, just pay the difference. No big deal. Nice and easy. Reshape. Two blue X. Sacrifice an artifact. Search my life for any artifact whose mana cost is extra less. Pretty straightforward. Capsize. Three mana with a buyback of three, so for six mana I can bounce a permanent and keep it in my hand. Um, throw this down with my infinite mana combo. Good times to be had for me and bad times for you. Fabricate is a Demonic Tutor for artifacts. Diabolic Tutor is Diabolic Tutor. Uh, Day of Judgment and Wrath of God, my two sweepers for, you know, self-explanatory reasons. Rite of Replication to be able to copy uh, a creature. Um, I love this card, and then I have a lot of abilities that I can really abuse with it. So it's, uh, it's, it's really nice. And open the vaults. Now, while this does affect me and my opponents, the value I will get out of it for playing predominantly artifacts is amazing. 
um, it'll, you know, res sometimes 10, 15 artifacts to my side of the board and maybe give them one or two. It's, it's really, really worth it, even with its downfall. Now I'm going to move on to my <clears throat> non-creature artifacts, um, mostly to support my deck. Uh, they do have some cool abilities. Um, time Sieve, being able to take extra turns is nice, and I have a way I can abuse this to get infinite extra turns. Thopter Foundry, being able to turn my dying or junk artifacts into 1-1 uh, one, one flying blockers is nice. Oblivion Stone, being able to wrath and save some permanents is very nice, but once I get down Microsynth Lattice and I get down Darksteel uh, Reactor, this becomes super, super one-sided, and then I'll just resurrect it and keep using it every turn. Sculpting Steel, being able to copy any artifact in play is super nice. But once I drop Microsynth Lattice with this, I can copy any permanent in play. Even better. Kark Clan Ironworks. Basically the artifact version of Ashnod's Altar. Sacrifice an artifact, get two to my mana pool. This is really my combo enabler. This card is, is severely underrated. Neverill's Disc. Um, just another Wrath I have in here. Uh, destroys all artifacts, enchantments, and creatures. Leaves the lands and the planeswalkers. That's that's all it does. But once I throw down a Darksteel Forge, and I throw down a sorry a Darksteel Reactor and a uh, Microsynth Lattice, again it's super super one-sided and great for me and bad for you. Voldelk and Ori, I like playing things with Flash. It's great being able to <laughs> dump my hand on my opponent's turn. Awesome. Trading Post, um, I play it predominantly for the last two abilities. Uh, the Sacrifice a Creature to return an artifact from my graveyard to my hand, and Sacrifice an artifact to draw a card. That's what I'm really using it for. I don't really use the discard a card to gain for life or pay one life to get an 0-1 GOAT, unless I need the blocker, but that's pretty much what it's done there for. It has those nice abilities for me. Scourglass, just another sweeper on a stick. Um, destroy all permanents except for artifacts and lands. This card actually gets worse when I play Michael Synth Lattice, but I can play around that really heavily, and uh, I've, I've used this to great effects many, many times. Uh, mirror Turbine, big piece of my, my combo engine here, but uh, tap it to get a 1-1 one, one Mirror, or I tap it in 5 Mirror to tutor from my library for a Mirror and put it directly into play. Uh, very, very nice. I mean, I think it's underrated. I really like it. Mirror Works, uh, I love this card. Being able to play an artifact, pay an additional 2 to get a copy of it, it's it's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's the exact same thing as Minion Reflector, but for artifacts. And then uh, the big daddy of it all here that I've been talking about, you've heard me say it quite a few times, Microsynth Lattice. This card comes down, it changes the game. Once this comes down, all permanents are artifacts, in addition to their other types. All cards in play become colorless, and all mana can be spent as though it was mana of any color. These are some huge, huge, huge abilities to add all into at the same time. And it's just, it's, it's really, really great. Um, I love this card. And then uh, Darksteel Forge. Um, I've been saying Forge sometimes and Reactor sometimes, but this is the card I've meant every single time. I just get the name confused personally. Nine mana, all artifacts that I control are indestructible. This card is amazing. And added into this card that everything I control, uh, everything on the board is an artifact. These two together, everything that I control is an artifact is an, and is indestructible. That's just, it's amazing. You can't go wrong. And now we're going to go over the creatures. So first we have Mirror Retriever, a 2 cost 1-1, one, one, uh, that when he dies I can take back any artifact from my graveyard to my hand. He's in here pretty much for that fact. He's going to die, I'm going to get back a different artifact. Uh, sort of like a faux eternal witness almost. Uh, Chief Engineer, as soon as I saw him spoiled in M15, he was going in this deck. Uh, a 2 cost 1-3, um, so his body isn't even terrible, but he gives all my artifact spells Convoke. That gives me a lot of ramp ability for this deck that it didn't really have before. Aether Sworn Cannonist. She's a uh, two cost two two. That whenever an opponent, uh, whenever a player plays a non artifact spell, they can't play any more spells that turn that aren't artifacts. Um, it's it's really good for this deck as I'm going to play two, three, four, five artifacts. Maybe every now and then play an, uh, a non artifact, but predominantly everything I have is an artifact and will really slow down my opponents. Burnished Heart, 3 cost, 2-2, two, two. pay 3, sacrifice it, tutor for any 2 basics, put them into play. Um, this is a really good ability for this deck. I use it just to get my uh, my planes, to get my Ameria up and running. 
Uh, I, I really like it for that. I mean, I know I don't run a lot of basics, but I found this to be really effective for me. Then we have Grand Architect, a three cost, uh, one three. Other blue creatures I control get plus one, plus one, not super relevant. But his ability to pay a blue and target artifact creature becomes blue until end of turn is nice for his third ability, which is tap any untapped blue creature I control to add two to my mana pool, and that two can only be used to cash artifacts to play artifact abilities. Again, it's just something that I can really use to, to help ramp the deck, uh, make a creature um, make an artifact creature blue, uh, and then just tap it for two mana to, to play something else. It's, it's really nice. It basically lets you turn one blue mana into two colorless. It's really helpful. Treasure Mage, uh, three cost, uh, two two. When he comes into play, I can tutor for any six cost or higher artifact. And then I'm usually going for something like a uh, Microsynth Lattice or a Dark Steel Reactor. Uh, it's, it's pretty much what it is. Junk Diver. Three cost, one one flyer. When he dies, he does the exact same thing as Mirror Retriever. I can take back an artifact from my graveyard out of my hand. Just in there for that reason. Scarecrow. Nice three cost, one two. He, uh... Can pay one, sacrifice a Scarecrow to draw a card. Not super overpowered with that, because he's my only Scarecrow. His ability that he's in here for is pay four, tap him, return an artifact from my graveyard to play. Gives my deck a lot of staying power when I can just start recurring my artifacts again and again. So he's really helpful for that. Sidri Galvanic Genius. When I saw her spoiled, I just immediately knew she was going in this deck. Um, I didn't want to build a deck around her, but I knew in this deck she'd be very helpful. Uh, target. Pay a blue, target non-creature artifact, becomes an artifact creature with power and toughness equal to its mana cost. Very nice ability. If I drop something like a Mycosynth Lattice, I can pay a blue to make their artifact a creature, and since it has no mana cost, it just dies. So I drop Mycosynth Lattice, I can pay a blue to start just killing people's lands. And I can tap a blue and a, sorry, a white and a black, target artifact creature gains death touch and lifelink until end of turn. Lifelink not super important, that death touch is nice. Turns all my 1-1 one, one mirrors and my 1-1 one, one thopters into very real threats. Uh, you know, turns them into chump locker, turns them from chump lockers into real just killing machines. Uh, it's been really, really good for that. And I can also use it on, on my opponents. You know, one of my opponents attacks and I can just give their artifact creature death touch so the creature that was blocking it dies or, or how it's going to work out. But being able to have surprise politic um, combat tricks is very nice. Uh, Fairy Mechanist. Four cost, two, two flyer. When Fairy Mechanics comes into play, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from it. Um, from among them, put it in your hand and put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. Um, really, really nice ramp. I can play this, kill it, res it, kill it, res it, and really just ramp up to the artifact spells that I want. Very, very helpful. Arcbound Reclaimer. He's very nice. He acts almost like a uh, Academy Ruins. Basically, he's a four cost, zero, zero with modular two. So in essence, he's a four cost, two, two. Um, but I can remove a plus one plus one counter from him to put an artifact card from my graveyard on top of my library so it would be my next draw. Again, it just gives the deck more stay in power being able to recur things again and again. Master Transmuter, she's very nice. She's a four cost, one two. And I can pay a blue, tap her to return an artifact creature from my hand. Uh, sorry, I'm I return an artifact I control to my owner's hand and then I can put any artifact from my hand into play. It's very, very nice being able to save artifacts that may get destroyed or that get targeted. But one of the abilities that is good about her that not a lot of people seem to play is that if I have down this mirror retriever, use his counter, put an artifact card on top of my library, whatever uses ability, then use her ability to tap her, I can bounce him to my hand and I can put the same artifact back into play. So I can just put him down again to reset him. That makes her more powerful, especially with a card like... Uh, for Exi Metamorph, who is a clone copy. So I can use her ability to just keep resetting what he's cloned as. Uh, makes her very, very powerful. So I'll put her off to the side there. And now we're on for Exi Metamorph. Four class clone, who's also an artifact, who can clone artifacts. Amazing for this deck. Amazing once I drop Mycosynth Lattice. He's just amazing in general. Indomitable Archangel. It gets very powerful in this deck. She's a four cost, four, four flyer, so nice body on her. Um, and she gives, if I'm Metalcraft, so if I have down three artifacts, which is quite easy with this deck, all my artifacts have Shroud. That's, that's awesome for this deck. 
Sanctum Gargoyle is a 4 cost 2 3 flyer. Uh, when he comes into play, can return any artifact from my graveyard to my hand. He's basically like an eternal witness um, for artifacts only. Solemn Simulacrum, you know what he does. 4 cost 2 2. When he comes in, I can tutor for a basic land. When he dies, I can draw a card. I get a lot of value out of him with killing him and rezzing him with this deck. It's He's really nice for the deck. Arkham Daxon, he's amazing. 4 cost 2-2, two, two, target artifact creature, target artifact creature's controller sacrifices it. Um, that player may search his or her library for a non-creature artifact and put it into play. When I drop Microsoft Lattice, I can use him to just start killing any creature they have on the board. And since it sacrifice, not destroys it, I can kill some of their indestructible guys and, and things of that nature. Very, very powerful card. Next up we have Dro Scorpion. Um, he's basically just a combo enabler. All he does is a 4 cost, 3-1. Um, whenever an artifact dies on anybody's board, his ability lets me untap an artifact that I control. That's it's really, really nice. Um, I can use him to generate infinite mana, infinite kill, all kinds of crazy, crazy things. He's, he's awesome. Sphinx Summoner. 5 cost 3-3 three, three flyer. When he comes into play, I can tutor for any artifact creature. That is amazing. The amount of creatures I have in here that are artifact creatures, just awesome for this deck. Send triplets. Uh, gives me a lot of protection. Five cost, three three. At the beginning of my upkeep, um, choose target opponent. Uh, this turn, that player can't play spells or abilities, and plays with his or her hand revealed, and I can play cards from their hand. This is really really nice because it protects me from a player on my turn. They can't cast anything, and if they have spells that are my color, I'm going to cast them just to get them out of their hand so they can't use them against me. Very nice, very effective. Kudul for Forge Master. A 5 cost 3, 5, that I can tap it, sacrifice 3 artifacts, and tutor for any artifact to put it directly into play. Uh, using some of my chump tokens off like a mere battle sphere or, or anything really that isn't useful to me anymore, to be able to tutor for anything is, is really nice. Aethos 1 Adjudicator. This guy's nice. He's a 5 cost 4-4 four, four flyer that for the cost of a mortify can mortify. So I pay a white, a black, a colorless, tap it, destroy target artifact, uh, sorry, destroy target creature or enchantment. And I can pay two and a blue to untap him. So I can basically, I can tap six to kill something and untap him to be able to use him for a blocker. Very, very nice. Uh, and when I drop a Microsynth Lattice and I have down Sidri, I can use the two of them in combination to be able to kill anything because Sidri will let me turn any artifact into a creature for a blue and he can destroy creatures. So something like uh, equipments or enchantment, uh, enchantments, sorry, equipments or, or other artifacts, I'll be able to kill that I couldn't kill normally, and that very much, you know, being able to unlock those puzzle pieces per se is very nice. Shrouding Sphinx is in here solely because he generates tokens. It's a six cost four four flyer. Whenever any artifact creature I control deals combat damage, I get that many one one uh, blue thopters. Pretty pretty basic, but it's really nice just to be able to attack and replenish with new blockers. Thopter Assembly is a very nice combo piece. He is a 6 cost 5-5 five, five flyer. Um, at the beginning of my upkeep, if he's my only Thopter, I bounce him, I get 5 Thopter tokens. He's a combo enabler, multiple blocker enabler. He does really just all kinds of good things for me. Soul of New Phyrexia. This card is goddamn amazing. If you're not playing it in every deck you have, unless you have a good reason, you, I think you're doing it wrong. 6 cost 6-6 six, six for Trample, that's pretty nice. His ability to tap 5 to make everything I control indestructible is very nice. Especially with this deck can generate infinite mana. I can make everything I have indestructible forever. My turn, their turn, it doesn't even matter. Awesome. Mill Battlesphere, 7 cost 4, 7. When he comes in, I get 4, 1, 1 mirrors. He's in there because of the mirrors will let me sack him to, to get mana or to do other abilities. Um, but I have one games off him where I, I play him, I get my 4 mirrors. I clone him a couple times with uh, Phyrexian Metamorph. Or uh, um, Sculpting Steel, get up to 10, 15 mirrors, swing with him, tap all those mirrors to give him a plus X plus O, and he automatically deals X damage. So if I attack with him, I tap 9 mirrors, he now becomes a 13, 7, and he automatically deals 9 damage. He hits very hard when I'm blocked, because he'll hit the player to the face, and then hit them for the damage. Very, very nice. Memnarch, this guy is super annoying to play against. He's a 7 cost 4-5 wizard. I can tap uh, 
two blue and a colorless to make timer permanent an artifact forever. And I can pay a blue and three to gain control of target artifact. So for every seven mana I have, I'm going to gain control of something forever. Um, I'll usually start sealing people's lands first, which will enable me to use his ability more often. But when I use when I play Microsynth Lattice and everything is an artifact, I can just pay the three to take the uh, the four to take things. It, it's super effective, and when I have down Microsynth Lattice and my infinite mana combo, I'm taking everything you got real quick. Filigree Angel. Eight cost, 4-4 four, four flyer. When she comes into play, I gain three life for every artifact I control. I've used her to gain upwards of hundreds of life, um, and being able to kill her and Reza or, or Blinker or Bouncer and then replay her, the life she'll give me is just a really, really nice bubble. Then we have Microsynth Golem, 11 a cost, 4-5, so he's very expensive for a small body, but he has affinity for artifacts, so he comes down relatively cheap, and then he gives artifact creatures I control, um, oh, sorry, artifact creatures that I'm going to play, he gives them affinity for artifacts. So you drop him, and everything you have becomes way, way cheaper. Alright guys, so now I'm going to be going over some combos and some synergies in the deck, so uh, hang on for the ride, and we'll see what we can come up with. So one of the, the, the first and foremost things I can really do is really going to revolve around Clark, uh, Clark Clan Ironworks. It's going to let me sacrifice an artifact to add mana to my mana pool. So what I will a lot of times do is have down Mere Turbine, tap Mere Turbine to get a token, sacrifice that token to that, get two mana. Pretty simple, right? Well now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in Dro Scorpion. Now what he lets me do is every time I un uh, an artifact uh, dies on the board, I can untap an artifact. So I'm going to tap this, get a token, sacrifice the token for mana. He's going to see the artifact died. He's going to let me untap an artifact. I can untap this and do it again. Now, every time I do that little repetition, I get two mana. Now what I'm going to do with that two mana is, is a few things. One of the things I can do is add in Memnarch to be able to produce infinite mana and, and kill or steal infinite things. Uh, in order for that to happen though, I do need to have down Mycosynth Lattice to make everything an artifact and to make everything colorless and let me use my mana as if it was any color. So these three right here is infinite mana. This right here will give me infinite mana of basically any color. So now I add a Memnarch and because I have infinite mana of every color, I can steal infinite permanence. And if I add in him, because I have infinite mana of any color, I can now destroy infinite permanence because he made them all. Uh, well, I can destroy infinite creatures or infinite enchantments. Uh, so if I have either one of these two down, if I have him down, I can steal everything. If I have him down, I can destroy every single creature on the board. And that, uh, that alone is, is very nice. <laughs> Being able to either take everything or destroy other creatures is a really, really nice ability. It, it, it really is. And then if I add in, you know, this, I can just make this combo bigger. I can, from that point on, using Soul of Nephrexia, make everything I control indestructible from that point on. No big deal there. Or if I add in, say, Sidri, I can use her ability to make all of their... I can use her for with the infinite mana and use it as blue, make all their make all their lands into creatures which will kill all their lands in immediately or I could make their enchantments and whatnot into, into creatures and or their, their artifacts into creatures as well and be able to kill them uh, so this is all one one big great synergy and combo I have going on right here they really really work well together so now if I take some of these pieces away um, you know, I'll go over them again one by one in a second. So just keep in mind that these four cards give me infinite mana of any color. Add him in, I have infinite creature kill and infinite enchantment kill. Add him in, and I get infinite stealing of every permanent on the board with these cards down. Add him in, I can from now on make everything I control indestructible. Add her in, I can destroy all my opponent's lands instantly and make all their make all their uh, their artifacts into creatures, thereby letting me steal them or kill them with the other two. Uh, you know, add this into the mix, my Darksteel Reactor, 
As just a side note, now everything I control is indestructible anyways without Soul of New Phyrexia. But even if I take away this, and if I take away my Microsynth Lattice, and I just go down to my infinite mana combo. Well, if I throw down my Grave Pact, now I have on I have infinite creature kill still. Because when I tap this and get a token, sacrifice a token to this, that's going to create Grave Pact and I have infinite creature kill. Or more infinite creature kill. Or if I throw down this one, I have more infinite creature kill and infinite artifact kill. Because whenever what, everything I, the, the token that I'm losing is an artifact and a creature, so that will kick off this. So that we have to sacrifice an artifact or a creature. Gets even better as it goes. Let's see what else do we got going on here. So once I've used this to generate infinite mana, you know, I can use it to generate, say, a million mana. Then I can throw this in. So then what I can do is use some of that infinite mana to... Well, actually, it doesn't really work as well as I thought it would. Uh, but if we go back to infinite colored mana, of, you know, mana of any color, throw down capsize, now I can just go bananas and bounce every permanent on the board. Or if we even take away the infinite mana, and we just go with Drow Scorpion, Mycosynth Lattice, and Arkham Dagson. Now what I can do with these three is I tap Arkham Dagson to make them sacrifice one of their artifact creatures. Because now they have this down, so all their creatures are artifact. Now because an artifact died, so you know I, I, I use him to, to make them sacrifice one of their creatures. Because this is out, all their creatures are artifacts, so they're all valid targets. Because he's out, when the artifact creature dies, he's going to untap infinite creature kill again. Just, just like that. Then I have this little two card combo, which can basically for five mana a turn net me infinite mana. And the way that's going to work is I'm going to cast him on a turn. My next turn he's going to bounce because he's the only Thopter, and I'm going to get five tokens. Then I'm going to play my Time Sieve, and I'm going to tap the Time Sieve, sacrifice those five tokens to take an extra turn. I'm going to recast him. Now I go to my extra turn. He's the only Thopter again. He bounces to my hand. I get those five tokens. This untaps on my turn. I'm going to tap it, sacrifice those five tokens to get another extra turn, and I'm going to cast him again. I get these two down. I have five mana down. I have infinite turns until I can just do what I need to do. So, I mean, as you can see, this deck has a lot of cool things it can do um, with, you know, only maybe 15% of the deck that are one great big combo slash synergistic piece of artwork. Uh, and it's, it's a deck that's really been crafted to do that. Um, you know, Sharoom is very well known for being a hated combo general for this particular combo right here. And what the combo is, is you cast Sharoom, and then you cast you cast Phyrexia Metamorph to copy her. Now, state-based actions take effect, and one of them has to go. So it doesn't matter who you kill. You know, you kill, kill him. Kill Phyrexia Metamorph. Now, the trigger that he put on the stack resolves. You can res him from the graveyard as another copy of Sharoom, and then keep repeating this process. He dies, he comes in, he dies, he comes in, he dies, he comes in. Uh, and then if you use a card like Bitter Ordeal, you can exile someone's entire uh, library, or if you had down Disciple of the Vault, you could make them lose all their life. Or Glass Dust Hulk, you could make him a million, a million one or a million two, whatever his toughness is, and attack unblockable. Those are things I was all not interested in doing. I didn't want to win based off a two-card infinite combo. As you can see, I do have some infinite combos. I'm not going to say I don't. But for them to really be effective, I need three or four cards down. And I feel like if I have the time to get a three or four card combo down, I deserve to be able to use it. Um, so that's really where I went with that. You can see I have a lot of synergy in this, a lot of cool combos. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot. Like, comment, and subscribe.